Child loss in India is a huge taboo. Losing a child is the worst kind of grief one goes through. So nobody wants to talk about it. And I knew exactly what I had to speak then. Hi, my name is Swagata, Swagata Majumdar, and I've been a media person since uh, as long as I can remember. I've been a journalist and a radio jockey in India and abroad, and uh, now I'm back to journalism again. I'm also a voice coach, voice actor for more than 20 years. I met Swagata through one of my friend, who is happy to be her cousin, brother. And we started talking over um, phone first initially and then uh, started with emails and then we finally met at Kolkata. So this fellow, my husband, he googled me apparently and uh, he says that he fell in love with the picture he saw on Google. Uh, we have framed that picture by the way on our <laughs> walls just to remind uh, where we started. I'm very loud and a boisterous person. I've always been that. And he was a stark opposite. He was quiet. He would just listen to me. He was smiling. And the way he looked at me, um, nobody had looked at me like that before. So in my heart, I kind of knew. I remember her cheeks, which is very funny, but obviously. And I have seen several times when I'm late in receiving her in the airport uh, or I'm late in some places, she has been crying and her cheeks are completely visible and that's funny now, but not then. So I have known Sh uh, Swagata since 2015. So that makes it like eight, nine years. And, uh, but it's just... You know, technically nine years. We both would agree that it's this was meant to be and we have known each other for like since forever. And uh, she is very spontaneous. She is great with bringing people together, you know, creating a sense of community. And that makes everyone around her happy. She is, of course, a happy person and she has got a great sense of humor. Yeah, that makes her lovable. She's, she's crazy. We got married in 2013. I moved to Bangalore with him. And uh, soon after, we wanted to be parents. So first we started uh, planning in 2015 for our first baby. Uh, which was basically a blighted ovum. Uh, there was no life in it, so we did not get to see or get to hear the heartbeat. Second time, we had an unfortunate medically termination of pregnancy in 2018. And that was obviously which was something which was not expected. And in 2019, we got to know that we are pregnant and uh, we are having twins and we always, always talked about having twins. So we were overjoyed that, you know, finally dreams were coming true and we were having twins. And 8th of March, I had planned to give her my baby shower uh, in 2020. Anirban had just come back from his only brother's wedding, which I could not attend. So I was very excited to know what all happened. On the night of 17th December, we had just had dinner and I was lying down on the couch and listening to his stories from the wedding when I felt a gush coming out of me. I stood up and there was a lot of fluid coming out of me and Anirban was like, you must have peed on yourself. And I said, no, no, this is not pee. This is something else. This is something else. And in a few minutes, I could realize that, oh, my sack just broke. And I was only five months pregnant by then. 
I was having fraternal twins, so I had two different sacs. While Gannu had a lot of water in his sack, Gamma had nothing. But both the babies were actually gaining weight, they were growing well. One month into my hospital stay, uh, when I turned, the day I turned six months pregnant and 26 weeks, um, the doctor told me, Swagata, you are doing well. Thankfully, your babies are well. We are discharging you now. Like the next day I was supposed to get discharged. We're discharging you now. Come back once you're in labor. That very night, my cord prolapsed for Gamma and they had to take me for an emergency C-section. Even before uh, anybody could answer our queries, two babies were taken out from me. Swagata was anyway given the anesthesia and she was uh, half asleep. I could see the babies, but I, I didn't hear them crying. The doctor said all of them are okay. Babies have started breathing, but I was 99% nervous about babies coming out in 26 weeks. Next morning when I asked the doctors to take me to see my babies, they were not very keen. So when I reached the NICU, the doctor said, Gamma may not make it anymore because he's not breathing. He's needing 100% oxygen. And uh, Gano is doing well from his dependency, from 60% oxygen. He's, it's come down to 40% oxygen, which is a good sign. So I didn't look at Gano that much because I was like, okay, this baby is going to survive. I told my mother, who was also there, I told I've lost, I'm losing this baby Ma, but I want to give him the best funeral possible because I couldn't do his anapraschan or I'll not get to see his milestone. So I told him, Ma, go fetch whatever good clothes you can find for this baby. He was very big for a six months old baby. They were properly formed, you know. They went and bought some amazing looking blankets and beautiful pillows and a, and a dress for him. I was preparing for funeral, though I could not step out of the hospital. My husband took Gamma to bury him. My 70 year old mother was carrying my dead son throughout the journey. It was a very tough time for the family. After he left, I started getting the chills and the doctor diagnosed me with sepsis in that very time. Ganu was still alive and that is why I was still going, I was still holding forth. Next day, a day after Gamma passed, I told Anirban to go and check what Ganu was doing. He went once, he came back and told me, Garno has jaundice. I said, don't worry about it. A lot of children have jaundice. He'll make it. He went the second time, he came back and told me, he's had a bit of bleeding, internal bleeding. And I knew, I just knew I'm going to lose another child. But I didn't say a word about it. That night... I sent Anirban again. I was in tremendous amount of pain. How bad is the pain? Do you want to come down and see him once? And I looked at his face and, he's, and I asked him, What? And he did like this. And I said, Gano? He said, No, he's still there. Do you want to come hold him? I just sprung out of the bed. I don't know from where I got the energy. The pain just went. First, I, I took him into my arms and I asked the doctor, point blank, is he still alive? And she's looking at me and she's like, oh, oh technically, yes. But he's lost a lot of blood. We've tried to revive him a lot of times. 
but it's too much to take for a baby and i held him in my arms and i kept telling him no gannu you can't leave me your brother has sacrificed himself for you to be alive leave me you can't leave me you have to be there you have to fight gannu you have to fight gannu your mother is resilient you have to be resilient i did that for one whole hour he was waspy his his breath was very heavy for a newborn after one hour i told myself what kind of mother would tell their baby to go through that tremendous pain when i know his gastrointestinal tract had burst open what kind of mother i am to be so selfish and tell him to survive this is when i told gannu i i'm okay if you have to go you leave i can't see you in so much pain gannu passed away with a very heavy sigh 5 minutes later in my arms when he gave his last breath i looked up to anirban and i said he's gone none of us were crying my immediate reaction after both my sons passed was to die i mean they go to heaven right they they are going to heaven who's going to take care of them their babies if i don't die and go to them who are going to take care of my children that was my first thought and i think all women go through this all women all bereaved mothers have gone through this feeling that i don't want to live anymore This is when one afternoon Anirban told me you know Swagata this is not the way you take stands on social media you write about a lot of issues you know why don't you talk about your experience and the feelings that you're going through after losing uh, the babies you know that way you might help a lot of other women who are bereaved and you know something just snapped i had finally found a purpose to live up till that time there was nothing zilch and then i was like oh okay i have a work to do i have to write my about my experience there are women like me the pain physically and emotionally was something that we cannot even think forget expressing i have seen her going through all of that when i en- entered the home empty with no babies in my arms to show is when it hit me really that they are gone forever a lot of people who were very close until that point of time did not speak to me a lot of people were saying things which were not right but they thought at that point of time that it was right they said things like time was the best healer they said things like you will have babies again people were not inviting me to their baby showers anymore uh i wasn't invited to parties i suddenly was not included in many happy family occasions but that just you know that just made me more resilient and i just knew exactly what my purpose was i knew that i had to break all of this child loss in india is a huge taboo nobody wants to speak about it because losing a child is the worst kind of grief one goes through so nobody wants to talk about it and i knew exactly what i had to speak then
she really needed a support and she found one online and it it definitely uh, helped her in many ways i just happened to bake a cake for gamaganu's first monthly birthday and we visited their graves that's when i saw anirban also taking interest in baking and it it just happened organically next month we were again both of us were you know actually thinking about what cake to bake and then we saw we find a lot of happiness in thinking about what to bake and then bake for them i started talking about it on social media people started comment commenting that uh, you should not be posting your dead babies uh, pictures um nothing stopped me we were i was posting about celebrations every month how i want to remember them and i started seeing a lot of dms from a lot of strangers uh saying that they wanted to connect with me because you know they have gone through this and right now nobody understands them and they would write things like nobody including my husband understands me right now after my loss except for you swagata she became so strong um it's a baby loss but at the same time our babies are saying that yes there are other mothers too like you mother so you probably can you know help them by understanding them kavita agnes uh, who lived abroad and priya who had just moved from abroad to india four of us came together and formed india's first bereaved mothers support group something india that india was lacking and india needed at that point of time Twenty twenty two, a miracle happened, and my daughter just arrived, and uh, I was very happy. I was okay, very happy. She's our rainbow baby. About a year later, after uh, after the first birthday of my daughter, I suddenly got to know that we have been matched with another child, and uh, I opened the referral. the kara referral that i had got and we had no not put any gender preferences but we saw it's a boy and i was like oh my god i'm having a boy another boy can you believe from uh, wanting to have twins now i have four children two in heaven one biological and another adopted and my my head my heart my hands Everything is now so full.